hip pain, causes, and treatment. What are the common causes of hip pain? Pain can arise from the structures that are within the hip joint or from the structures surrounding the hip joint. The most important thing is to ask the patient to locate the site of the pain. Ask the patient to point at the site of the pain. When the patient states that their hip hurts, it doesn't mean that the pain is coming from the hip joint itself. So ask the patient to point at the site of the pain. The patient understanding of the hip is different than our understanding of the hip. The patient may consider the botic region to be the hip. So ask the patient if the pain is located in the front, on the side, or is it in the back? Here you can see the hip joint in a bony model. The hip joint is a weight-bearing joint. It is made of femoral head, the ball, and the stablum, the socket. The pain in the hip can be anterior hip pain in the front, which is usually a deep groin pain, or it can be on the side, outside, lateral hip pain, as you can see here in this diagram. The pain can also be posterior hip pain. This pain is almost, appears to be like it's in the buttock. The pain can be far posterior hip pain, coming from the sacroiliac joint and the lower spine. The anterior hip pain is usually deep within the groin and it can result from arthritis of the hip and other causes. So what is the treatment of arthritis of the hip? The treatment is usually conservative treatment first by anti-inflammatory medication, physiotherapy, possible injections. Surgery is done in late cases, usually by a total hip replacement. In general, patients with hip arthritis will have pain in weight bearing with decreased range of motion and pain with rotation of the hip. So if you have a patient with a limb while walking and growing pain and decreased range of motion, then the patient probably has arthritis of the hip. Groin pain or anterior hip pain can also occur from labral tear. The labral tear is usually diagnosed by clinical examination with a provocative test of flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. The diagnosis is confirmed by an MRI arthrogram. The treatment of labral tear is usually conservative treatment first by physiotherapy, anti-inflammatory medications, and injections. Surgery will provide good result. It's usually done by arthroscopic debridement or repair of the tear. A stress fracture can also cause anterior hip pain or deep groin pain. The fracture is usually diagnosed by an MRI. The X-ray may be normal. Early diagnosis is important before the fracture displaces and gives a bad result. The treatment usually by surgical fixation of the fracture utilizing laggy screws. Femoral head replacement is done in rare late cases. 
A vascular necrosis of the femoral head will also give anterior hip pain or deep groin pain. When the blood supply of the femoral head is interrupted, a segment of the bone dies and becomes necrotic and the femoral head will collapse. So what is the treatment of AVN? In the early stages of AVN without collapse of the femoral head, the treatment is usually decompression of the femoral head by drilling this dead segment of bone in the femoral head to bring new blood supply to the area. In severe cases with collapse of the femoral head, which is usually diagnosed by an X-ray, the treatment is usually a total hip replacement. How about pain? on the lateral aspect of the hip, on the outside of the hip. It occurs usually due to inflamed bursa, trochanteric bursitis, or hip bursitis. The treatment is usually conservative by anti-inflammatory medication, physiotherapy, and injection. Surgical treatment by excision of the bursa is rarely done. In case of chronic resilient trochanteric bursitis, try to get an MRI to exclude a tear of the abductor muscles of the hip, the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus muscle tear. How about posterior hip pain, like pain in the buttock? The posterior hip pain is usually due to piriformis syndrome because the sciatic nerve can be irritated in piriformis syndrome. The treatment is usually conservative treatment by anti-inflammatory medications, by physiotherapy, by stretching and injections. Surgery is usually rare. It is the last resort. It includes the release of the piriformis tendon and exploration of the sciatic nerve. It is usually done when conservative treatment fails to achieve relief to the patient. How about far posterior hip pain? Far posterior hip pain may come from the sacroiliac joint or from the lower lumbar spine conditions. The sacroiliac joint problems are usually underestimated and are unappreciated. The sacroiliac joint is a challenging diagnostic and treatment entity. There are a lot of clinical diagnostic examinations that can be used to diagnose the sacroiliac joint problems, such as the Faber test and others. However, injection of the sacroiliac joint is probably the method to diagnose pain originating from the sacroiliac joint versus pain originating from other areas. When there is an improvement of the pain after injection of the sacroiliac joint, then we probably consider that the problem is in the SI joint. Lower lumbar spine conditions can also cause referred pain to the buttock and the hip area. In fact, symptoms of hip and lower spine conditions can overlap or both of them can coexist in the same patient. You have to separate pain from the hip from pain that comes from the spine. The sacroiliac joint pathology symptoms overlap with spine symptoms and the hip symptoms. The hip and the spine pathology share the same complaints and their symptoms may overlap. That will make the diagnosis and treatment of these patients difficult and challenging. Hip arthritis had the classic presentation. The patient will have 
hip and groin pain. The patient will be limping and will have antalgic gait. Patient with groin pain is seven times more likely to have a hip disorder only for a combined lesion, but rarely a spine condition alone. It may be difficult for the treating physician to determine if the patient's symptoms come from the hip or comes from the spine or is it coming from both. The buttock area is the most common region of referred pain in an isolated hip pathology, followed by combined thigh and groin pain, but never to the lumbar spine. Pain radiating below the knee can occur from a spine or a hip arthritis, about 47% in hip arthritis. Pain over the greater trochanter is usually a hip pathology and rarely a spine pathology. The patient with lumbar stenosis or a spine condition will have similar problems of difficulty in walking. In lumbar stenosis, the patient will have neurogenic claudication with back and lower extremity pain that is worse by ambulation and is relieved by sitting and bending forward, and you call it the shopping cart sign. 